Yeah, we're good. Ready? Already just it's still now. recording. Still yeah. Welcome back to the Nosebleed Sports Podcast. I'm Chris Witt, and with me, as always, is Mr. Adam Schmidt. Adam, how are you today, sir? Doing well. How about yourself? Well, I totally just screwed up the started show, so other than that, uh, yeah, if you're on YouTube, you just saw my big butt right in front because I couldn't figure out how to turn everything on, but we're ready to go here now. Uh, ready, set for action. Adam, NBA playoffs are going on right now. There's some Major League Baseball, but we probably won't get too much into Major League Baseball. Uh, we'll talk about what's going on in the NBA playoffs, uh, and then we've got a bunch of fun stuff that has nothing to do with sports. That's right. That's right, which is usually some of our best and certainly most fun podcast when we do that so yeah it's my favorite type of podcast i mean i know people co- get on to the nosebleed sports podcast uh you know look up sports stuff but uh, for the most part we like to do fun stuff and today we are going to start off because i've been staring at this for way too long we're going to start off with a little special something i like to call try the new reese's snack we have been talking about how delicious reese's has been making all kinds of candy bars they made reese cups with potato chips in them they've got pretzels in them did i bring one of the potato chip ones in for you or did i just eat it and say no don't eat it i think you ate it i did i'm I sorry don't, i don't think i, I tried, the, I I don't think I tried the potato chips the nut, did you try the one did i bring in i brought in the one with uh with the rice the reese's pieces in the candy bar didn't yeah, i i think the, I, you would remember i maybe I, I didn't that thing is delicious all right <laughs> i eat like three of those a day because they're all Everybody, it used to be, you know, when you got a king size candy bar, it would be like, buy one, get the second for a dollar. Now they're all buy two, get the third free. And I'm like, well, I only wanted two, but I guess I'm having three now. If you're going to twist my arm. Exactly. So what we have today, Adam has brought in the Reese's snack cake. This is a totally new item that I have never seen. Uh, two cakes. I'm, I'm pretty excited. Ooh, <laughs> that, I was still eating that. Your, your, your reflexes and your athletic ability just go sky, just skyrocket all world athleticism when a Reese's product is falling from your hand. I didn't even see it because I can't look down. I'm looking at you and the microphone's in the way. So that was just a quick, I felt it slide and snatched it up on the download. That's instinct, baby. Yes, instincts, baby. That's, that's exactly right. So. Uh, uh, Adam, why don't you take a bite of that? Why don't we both take a bite? All right, time? all right, dead air. Here we go. <laughs> so this has got like brownie in the bottom of it. Mm-hmm. Mm. I mean, you can't go wrong with brownie and peanut butter. Right. That's the thing. Two things about Reese's products. You want to taste that chocolate and peanut butter, that ratio, that right ratio. Not enough peanut butter. First bite was, is that your? That's my first. Not enough peanut butter. Too much brownie, not enough peanut butter. A little. Mm-hmm. A little bit. I think I agree with you. Yeah. What was your first thought? Um, just like when we watch our comedy, uh, our comedy specials or whatever. We, mm-hmm. Sometimes you go in with it thinking, I'm really excited. I know this guy. He's one of my favorites. It's going to be really good. Mm-hmm. So, and then sometimes you're like, Never heard of this guy. Looks low budget. Probably not going to be so good. And it's a killer. And it's a killer sometimes. Reese's, you, you expect big. Always. You expect great. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you, this is good. I mean, I'm putting it, I'm giving it out of 10, though. Mm-hmm. Out of 10. Most Reese's are in the 8, 9, 10. I'm going to give it a 6. A 6. Mm-hmm. Let me and tell it's you. too much brownie. Here, here's something else that's. Hold on a second. Let me let me preface that with, I'm eating these a- every time I see them. So, <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna find a Kroger that's still open when I leave this when I leave your house and I'm gonna get more. 
Yeah, this is still unbelievable. Um, I, out of 10, I would give it a, a probably a seven. Seven. Yeah, probably we're about the same then. Now, here's the thing. Earlier this evening for dinner, I had something else, another Reese's product that I hadn't had before. It's a um, snack bar, I think they call it. It's sort of, it's not similar to this. There's like a layer of, like a thin layer of chocolate. It's mostly like the crispy rice. Um, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. With a, a little bit of peanut butter drizzle on it. Oh, that's different. It's not bad, but it tastes like any other one similar to that. Mm-hmm. Any other snack bar like that. Not your typical Reese's, not a lot of chocolate in that thing. So you didn't taste a lot of it. Com- compared to that, this is exceptional. Off the hook. Yeah. yeah. And that was fine. That wasn't bad or anything. Yeah. This is really good. Now, I also have the Reese's, which are my favorite. I think my favorite Reese's product are the Reese's Peanut Butter Cup Big Cup. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which, uh, like, mega peanut butter. Mm-hmm. And you might think, well, that sounds like too much peanut butter. It's not too much peanut butter. I don't think. Well, I'm not a peanut butter fan, but I could eat Reese's peanut butter. I hate peanut butter, but I could eat Reese's peanut butter by the gallon. <laughs> yeah. Um, maybe maybe the next <laughs> the next uh, bet I win on this podcast, you have to eat peanut butter the whole podcast. I'm a, uh, does it have to? Can I pick the plate? Can I pick the peanut butter? Can I get Reese's peanut butter? Does Reese's make peanut butter that you can use for pb and j i don't because they like, should they should they really should why wouldn't they they might they can make more money off these putting just a little bit of peanut butter in a cup same charging the same amount they charge for an entire jar of peanut butter mm-hmm. i'd pay the extra three dollars 100 that thing might be more than three more three more dollars <laughs> you ain't getting <laughs> might be about a 11 dollar jar of peanut butter i'd buy it Mm-hmm. Mm. 100 that on a pb and j both both of our um forget about the j oh i gotta have yeah with Re- with reese's peanut butter mm. i almost don't that's the one it. time i could do it i'm going reese's peanut butter on one side of the bread mm-hmm. reese's chocolate on the other side of the bread mm-hmm. and i mean and i like it reese's peanut butter cup sandwich all right well <clears throat> I'm going to save my, the other one for after, for a little. You didn't need both? No, nope, a little post-podcast post So I guess Fatty over here in my seat went ahead and scarfed two down the time that it took you to eat one. No, I'm just ah, so, it's about normal. I am just so overly sensitive about not made, making people listen to me smack my lips and my It's so mouth. hard to do, too. So hard to do when you're having any kind of. I, I think we need to. I'm going to go buy a bunch of Reese's, all the different things they have. And then we just do them every week. I'm with you. I'm in. All right. Welcome, to our, cool. welcome to our new segment. Welcome to the new segment. Taste that Reese's. Very good. Very good. Adam. Yes, sir. Let me ask you a question here, bub. Let me give you a question here, bub. The NBA playoffs are going on right now. We are both fans of the NBA. Both admittedly have not watched nearly as much NBA as uh, we would like. Now, the Boston Celtics go into, I'm sorry, the New York, the new, what are they? The Brooklyn Nets go into Boston. And Kyrie Irving, uh, you saw the stuff, some flipping some birds up and doing all that good stuff. What do you think? And and, and, and had an amazing game. Yeah, played absolutely amazing. And now, after two games, Boston is up 2-0. Boston wins tonight and wins the game Kyrie played out of his mind. And on a- flipped off the crowd multiple times. And here we are sitting with one of the greatest teams that we all thought is now down 2-0. And Kyrie's been able to play in both games. I expected after the first game, which was one on a buzzer beater, incredible, incredible play. I don't know if you saw that when mm-hmm. Jason Tatum caught the ball and spun kind of all in one motion. Yeah, with around. with 1.8 seconds or something like that. <laughs> Made a layup at the buzzer. Unbelievable finish. Um, and that's – I'm like, we're getting seven games of this. Yep. And I was so excited. I'm thinking about it again today. I'm like, this could be one of the best first-round matchups 
we, we've ever seen. Because mm-hmm. the Nets are way better than a seven seed. Um, but you're right. Boston, after their win tonight, is up to well. I was really, I was expecting a 50 piece from Kevin Durant tonight. Yep. Maybe I mean, I was, I was like, Brooklyn is going to come back and win maybe game two. But now they go to now they go to Brooklyn, right? They go to Brooklyn. <laughs> so now they play at home. And look, Boston is looks fan. Te- they are probably the best looking team right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, just the last. Uh, five six weeks or something like that of the season they turned a huge corner probably the best defensive team in that span um and and they're just they're just playing great great basketball and up 2-0 against the brooklyn nets i i we, they're the two seed for a reason they're the, two they're, seed they're for the second reason. best team in in the east for a reason and i was gonna say they might be the best team in the east <laughs> you know uh, Miami did enough. Miami had a great season. And Miami they, had a great deserve. season. They are so well coached. Eric Spolstra, is it is it possible to say that he's still the most underrated coach in the NBA? Yeah, to yeah. this moment in time. Yeah, I think that might be the case. He yeah. coached those Heat teams with with LeBron and those guys, and he's done so much with these Heat teams with so little. It's unbelievable. He, I mean, they've put together – Pat Riley's done a pretty good job of putting together teams, but he makes sure they're always good defensively. Yep. And the, and they're just a solid, efficient team all the time. I mean, he keeps them in the upper echelon of the East every year, even with roster turnover. Yep. And they've got ice tray right now, ice cold. Yep. So, Miami, I, I don't know, man. I, I don't – it's hard to say. I think there are five teams, maybe four teams or five teams in the East that could still – that could still win the East, I think, but Boston does look the best to me, and uh, and, and so and after that win tonight, I mean, it's hard to, gosh, it's hard to say they're not going to win that win that series, which is probably the toughest first round series, yeah, um, for at least for any of the higher seeds. Yeah, to have to play Brooklyn to get the two seed and then have to play Brooklyn, I mean, that's, who, that's a struggle right there, but. So let's so so do you think this is 2-0 right now? Do you think when this goes back to Brooklyn, Brooklyn uh can win the next three games? I don't no think Kyrie. The next three. No Kyrie. Right? Kyrie can't play in Brooklyn still, right? Or no, no, wrong, he, he playing. is playing. All right, I don't know how that works anymore. Yeah. Um yeah, I think it's something like, yeah, the, the mayor uh is really smart. He he so like Kyrie can play. But he can't be uh, within six feet of the ball, and also uh, <laughs> people that play music can be there, but nobody else can. Right, right. But also, yeah, yeah. Anyway, whatever yeah. rules you want to make for the moment. <laughs> uh, but no, so it, that's the thing. They're fully healthy now. I don't know if fully healthy, but Kyrie and Kevin Durant are playing every game now, so that's what makes them so dangerous. And they still have a good roster up and down. Boston's so 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 good. And it seems like they didn't miss a beat when uh, Ime Udoka took over as mm-hmm. coach for Brad Stevens, and, and, and Brad Stevens moved up into the front office. Didn't miss a beat. Brad, Steve, you can see Brad Stevens' fingers still on this, sure, on this team, and and he's done an amazing job. So, I'm I'm saying, I mean, I I think I think Boston's going to win the series. So if they win that series, they play the winner of the Milwaukee Chicago Bulls series, mm-hmm. Milwaukee Bucks Chicago Bulls. Right now, Milwaukee leads that series one nothing. And they are down 65 to 49 in the third quarter right now. Down 16 points. They're down 16. Um, this Bulls team was atop of the East for a while in the beginning of the season. They looked really good. Uh, and then Alex Caruso was out for a while. Um, that controversial play where he got fouled going up by, uh, oh, what's his name from Duke that Everybody hates. Um, oh, uh, I know you're talking you know about. I'm talking about. So uh, <laughs> he was out for a while. Came back toward the end of the year, though. Uh, Demar Derozan was in, in MVP conversation for a lot of the year, mm-hmm. um, and and then you didn't hear really the last three or four weeks maybe uh, as much about him, but because they weren't winning as many games. Not that he necessarily was playing any worse. They just weren't winning as much. Um, so they did slide down to the sixth seed. Milwaukee had another good year, um, and and Milwaukee's up one nothing, but down now. So <clears throat> there's a lot of basketball to be played in this game. Yeah, 
Yeah, I'm still taking Milwaukee. Much. I'm still taking Milwaukee in this. They're just too good of a team. Milwaukee in the series for sure. For sure, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then <clears throat> Milwaukee, Boston, that'll be so good. That would be fun to watch. That, Mil- that would be a lot of fun. I would love that because Boston's got the team that can stop Giannis. I mean, we said that a couple years ago when, when the or last year, didn't they beat the Celtics last year? Because uh, I thought that I I remember saying like Marcus Smart is the one. You know, you get Marcus Smart and Jason Tatum. You got a you got a decent tandem. You can put on a real long Giannis Antetokounmpo and really try to stop him with those af, with those athletic defenders. But but then then again, now that I think about it, I. I Maybe that was two years ago in the bubble or something, but I thought that was last year. Uh, it may have been. I, I don't know, but, I mean, that'll be a super good series. And if you're a, a, a ca- casual NBA fan or a fringe NBA fan or not an NBA fan at all and you're clueless and you still say that nobody plays defense in the NBA and that's why you don't watch it, uh, if Milwaukee plays Boston in that that's, series, please watch that so, be, you, is so you understand be, yes. how dumb you are when yes. you say that. Yes, and 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 but and then you get the ones that say, "Well, they only come out, uh, they only play defense in the playoffs." Yeah, they only play defense in the playoffs. Well, so a guy who doesn't, and you just mentioned him, and I'm glad you did. We got to give props to Marcus Smart, the first guard named Defensive Player of the Year since 1996. Holy cow! Really? And I believe- he deserves it because he has not got it. But there's been a few years where that dude, they put him on the best player on the court, and it, and he does his deal. Every game, he's he is such a good defensive player on the perimeter, and yes, he he should. They always give it to a bit to a center. It's always Rudy Gobert, one of those guys, whoever leads the league in block in, shots, in blocks, and in, in rebounds. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, but anyway, very excited. And how cool was it that I'm pretty sure the guy that won it in '96 uh, pres- came to practice to present to uh, tell him that he has won it and present him with the trophy. Gary Payton. Are you serious? Oh, Gary that Payton, is so glove. cool. Came to when the practice. glove gets to tell you, you did something that nobody's done since me. And that dude's nickname was the glove. Literally, he covered everything. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so very cool for, for Marcus Smart. Um, he's a fun guy to watch play defense. All right. So jumping up to Philadelphia, Toronto, which Philadelphia won tonight to go up 3-0. They are dominating that oh, series. Yeah. There was a lot of people early on that were picking Toronto. I heard a lot of people saying they thought Toronto could handle this. When you're talking about Joel Embiid, who's been an MVP candidate, and he was a little – he struggled a little bit early, um, towards the end of the year. I think I don't know if he was injured or, or the whole deal with James Harden coming over there got a little weird for a minute. And and now and now they're they're playing really good basketball. So – I think you get James James Harden in a happy place, winning games in the playoffs. Joel Embiid is not going to let him be a whiny, spoiled brat because, I mean, James Harden might still do it, but Joel Embiid ain't going to be over there like, no, yeah, we're still here for for James, you know. Yeah, we're, you know, we're working well together. No, Joel Embiid is going to be like, no, this boy needs to get his act together. He's not a child. Uh, didn't he call? Didn't he call Ben Simmons a child like three times? <laughs> he was not. He, I think he f- supported Ben at first, and then when Ben was like I'm not out. showing up and yeah. didn't want to be on the team anymore, then he was like, "Forget about this guy." Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so it looks like Philly's easily going to win that series, maybe, maybe in a sweep. Um, and then if they win that series, or when they win that series, they'll play the winner of the number one seed, Miami Heat, against Atlanta. They can beat the Heat. They've got a team that can beat the Heat. The Heat is really good, but that that Philly team, I love that. I think I love Joel Embiid. I like Joel Embiid. He's played. He's had an amazing year. I'd love to see them get to that point. Make it to. The, I want them in the finals. So I, I think we probably both agree Miami wins that series, right, against Atlanta. I mean, they're up two. Oh now. yeah, Miami beats Atlanta. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Miami, Philly, and Milwaukee, Boston. It, I, I'm I'm already That's excited. Awesome. For that. Isn't that awesome for that Eastern semifinals? Um, okay, so let's move down to the to the West. Uh, Phoenix, New Orleans. New Orleans stole one that first game. They did, and they stole it. And uh, Devin Booker and company and Chris Paul was were not gonna let that happen last night. They were not gonna let a second one go last night because Chris Paul came out and played. Out of his mind yesterday, especially in the fourth quarter, the most uh, probably the most uh, competitive guy in the league uh, is going to make sure that they that the best team by record easily Mm -hmm. in the league uh, is not going to get embarrassed again in the first round. 
Um, so I, I expect, although it looks strange to see that tied one, one Phoenix runs away. With I'm not worried game. about that. Yeah. Phoenix is too geared. Another, another series one, one. And it, when I think when feet, excuse me, when Phoenix wins that there, here comes the uh, recent snack cake. Oh yeah. Uh, when Phoenix wins that series, they play the winner of Dallas, Utah, which is already a pretty fun series too. Um, and Utah, Utah slid a little bit this year because they were one of the top two teams the last like three years in the West, mm-hmm. um, it, you know, and nobody really paid attention to them. But they were so they were another team that was unbelievable defensively. And Rudy Gobert was, you know, he's a three time defensive player of the year or whatever. Right. But uh, Donovan Mitchell and they got a bunch of shooters and uh, they're very well coached, too. But Dallas took a big step forward after the trade deadline. Um, they brought in Spencer Dinwiddie and, you know, Jason Kidd is in his first year there. Luka Doncic missed the first two games of this series. He's just been upgraded to questionable okay. for the third game for tomorrow. Okay. Um, Getting better. The, I think, I mean, they're going to need him to win this series. Oh, there's no doubt about it. They, they be, they'll be lucky to get another game if he's not in. I mean, you know, uh, him and Porzingis, that little one-two punch is a lot of fun. Um, Porzingis, right? Porzingis got traded. Who's the, the, no? Who's the, the big tall? Who's that big tall guy that's with playing with them now? They step on. He's another different from a different world. Uh, <laughs> is it Boban? Mario? Boban. Boban. Him and Boban step on each other's yeah, yeah, yeah. feet every yeah. single game. It looks like a Boban fun is line. like the most fun guy to follow in the NBA. He's so cool. Uh, but anyway, yes, Boban's not playing much in this series either. I don't – maybe he's hurt. But um, anyway, Utah is, is still Utah. They're, they're going to be really, really tough to beat, even though they've taken a little step back this year. And without – I mean, I'm impressed that it's tied 1-1 without Luka. I mean, the, the first game was close. It was 99-93. Um, I mean, it was a close – it was a close game still, even though they lost. Yeah. Uh, Jalen Brunson, though. I mean, oh, Jalen Brunson Jesus. just took over 41 points, eight rebounds, five assists. He took over that that second game. That's that's what kept that's what won the game for him. That guy had a an amazing night. He is such a solid player. Mm-hmm. Um, you probably saw a lot of him, didn't you? Like I saw college. way <laughs> too much of Jalen Brunson. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's going to be very interesting to see wh- when or if Luca comes back in this series and how that ends up. If Luca comes back, I think they could. I mean, if Luca plays the rest of the series, I say Dallas wins this. Without Luca, I think Donovan Mitchell and and company take that over. Can Dallas or Utah beat Phoenix, or no. do you think they do? No. Okay. Um, I agree with you on that. All right. So the last part of this bracket um, in the West, Golden State in Denver. I was pretty excited about this one too because the guy who I think should definitely be the MVP. My pick for MVP at the end of the season Jokic. is Jokic, for sure. Um, but the MVP of the NBA for the last, like, two weeks is Jordan Poole. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who is averaging 30 a game so far in these first two in these first two games and averaging probably close to 30 in the last, like, week uh, of the season, too, because uh, Steph Curry was out. Yep. Got he- hurt again. He only played 20 minutes last game, came off the bench, wasn't even didn't even start last row both games, didn't start. Yep. Yep. So he's he's still working his way back. Draymond Green missed a bunch of time at the end of the year, just barely came back a couple games with a couple games left in the season, but they're just now getting healthy. If Steph gets all the way healthy, and they're up 2-0 by the way in the series already. Yeah. If Steph gets healthier, if Draymond's healthy, if Clay's healthy, if Jordan Poole continues anywhere close to what he's been doing this is and then uh, as a matter of fact there's a uh there's a lineup that they found it's those four and uh andrew wiggins i, I yeah I, it just escaped my mind i thought of it when i started to say it and just fell it's like what? the death death lineup or something like that it's oh, like that? they found their best possible lineup yeah um so that's their five i, I guess they're playing lights out uh, against Denver so far with that lineup, and you know, Wig- yeah, was is it Wiggins, Poole, Thompson, Draymond, Draymond and Steph? Steph yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so Steph Curry, listen to this the other night. Twenty-two minutes. That's all he played. Twenty-two minutes. 
34 points, three boards, four assists, a steal, and a block. 70% from the field. All right, he's healthy. 50% from three. <laughs> he was only five of seven from the free throw line, though. You know he went home pissed off. <laughs> yeah. He stayed, he stayed <laughs> after the game and shot free throws for two hours. <laughs> Unbelievable. His plus minus was 32. What a game. What a, Steph Curry is an insane basketball player. I, I don't think – I don't think this is going to end in a sweep. I think Denver can still play with them, to be honest with you. Sure, Jokic could take over a game, and they've got the shooters around that can do things. They can, they, they should win a game. They should win at least one in Denver. I wouldn't be surprised if they take two in Denver. And that's the most uh, impressive part about what Jokic did and what they – I mean, they ended up the sixth seed, but they got up to, I think, four not too long ago. They were, they were keeping pace with some other really good teams for a while. Um, and they they just played their entire year without their second and third best players. Oh wow! Yeah, so uh, that's how good Jokic has been. He's made them a pretty good team, especially in the West. Um, but I, I, you know, Golden State when they're healthy, they're still really, really, really good. Yeah. So I think they win that series. I'm with you. Memphis, Minnesota, another one that uh, kind of looked like the the year that Memphis had it kind of felt like almost like a set, like a Celtics kind of, kind of thing. Like they're, they're really good defensively. They're very young by the way too. Right. And they just have a, such a good core. They're so athletic. They're really long. Um, and you just kind of felt like the way they were playing all year and to end up with the two seed, you're like, okay, I, congratulations to Minnesota. They won the play in and all that. They won that first playing game. Memphis is going to run away with this one. I, I don't know. I don't know that I thought that. I mean, I don't know that. It, you're talking about Carr Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards, number one overall pick in this league. I mean. He's turning into a really good player. Uh, yeah, really good player. And and Carr Anthony Towns, who in the past year, we talked about this last week or the week before, is all of a sudden, is it just seems more aggressive? Seems more he can become he becomes more dominant inside. Sometimes he's not just at playing the shooting game, and you know he just seems like he's more into it than he ever has been before. And I I I love Carl Anthony Towns. He's one of my favorite players. So I'm I'm taking I'm taking Minnesota in this in the series in the series. Wow, I'm going to okay. take Minnesota in the series. So. Uh, you would say Golden State in Minnesota in the second round then. And I'm taking Golden State in that one state for sure. Okay. Wow. That's very interesting. Okay. Well, that series is tied. Memphis, Minnesota is tied 1-1 right now. Um, so we'll see. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, John Morant got a little hobbled in that last game, uh, but Memphis did Memphis did end up winning that game, um, I think, by quite a bit. Or I think – or maybe Minnesota made a little run at the end. But um, anyway, that's we, – we've got – so the only there's one game or there's one series that's three games deep and that is Philly and they have won all three of those games. So, but got a long way to go. But we just wanted to kind of touch on uh, each of those, and we'll we'll kind of keep keep in touch with the playoffs uh, as they go along, and we'll talk more has, about it once they once we get to the. Has conference. there been any fights in the NBA playoffs yet? I haven't noticed any fights. No hands being thrown. I haven't seen a lot of blood. <laughs> Have you given blood recently, Adam? Okay. Uh, I have. Yeah? I have. Anything fun happened with uh, with blood giving? I, I gave blood for the first time in like 22, 23 years. Yeah. Something like that, okay. which is, is the second time in my life. Nice. Uh, that's, one more, that's one more time than me. Okay. Wow, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> did I ever tell you the story when I gave blood? No, tell me that story. No, no, no. I want yours first, and I'll I tell you mine. First. No, I'm, I want to tell No. I just want to know if I've ever told you. I, you, I mean, I, I don't know. You may have. That was 20 years ago, right? It was 20 years ago. Go ahead. I want to hear what you – I want to hear yours. Okay. So, I uh, I went in just to get blood. I, I just wanted to find out my blood type. I call, and they're like – the lady's like, you know we got to take – and I, I forget. It's, it's some unit of measure that I'm like, come on. Why do you talk to me and you need to measure like <laughs> pints? We come need on, eight pints? liters and two pints. Of Is it, are we talking the kind of pints that I eat? ice cream out of yeah i mean that's that's pints to me um so anyway she goes you know we got to take like two pints or something i'm like 
Oh, is that it sounds like a lot. I guess I guess yeah. that's a lot. Is that a sounds lot? Sounds like a lot. Um, I, you might as well tell me in milliliters or teaspoons or something like that. How many is it? <laughs> you need seven thousand teaspoons. Yeah. Of oh, blood. okay. Now I know how much you need. <laughs> um. Anyway, so she, so I go. I got to fill out all this paperwork. That's fine. You know, do you have how many teaspoons? Are in two pints. <laughs> 192 teaspoons. Oh, I thought she was, I was talk way to off. No, I've got her plugged in. Yeah, 192 teaspoons. Uh, in two pints? In two pints. Wow. Yeah. Seems <laughs> okay, like there'd so be I, way more than that. So I gave 192 teaspoons of blood. <laughs> when I went in there. Um, but anyway, so I get there. I fill out all the paperwork. No, I don't have AIDS. No, I'm, I'm, I don't have, uh, you know, the HIV or. Uh, yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> So I get in. So they finally, they, they, this lady takes me into this little room. They have like these cubicles with walls that go almost all the, all the way up, I guess, and doors on both sides. It's like a room, but it's a cubicle. Nice. Okay. With like screens as part of the wall. You can still see, you can still hear everything. I don't know why they're built like this. Well, they don't want any, you know, there's, there's personal stuff going on in there. HIPAA, HIPAA laws, I guess, mm-hmm. privacy. Uh, so anyway. This this girl comes in. She's like, "All right, come on, I'll take you. I'll take you back here, baby." Oh, baby! Yeah, baby. I that like whenever you get a bartender or a or a waitress, that's always like, "Hey, hun, hey, baby, all right, all right, boo, okay." Dude. Just calling it all types of stuff always gets slightly awkward. And and I still hear sometimes like people will use you know uh, uh, expressions like that, it, but I haven't heard "baby." Baby's a, a pretty, time. that's a pretty, uh, that's a pretty, like the only person I call babe is Aaron. That's it. The wife. That's it. Nobody right. else is babe. And, and so, and, and not even just babe. I hear everybody call each other ba- baby. Hey, babe. I don't hear baby anymore. That's hey, baby from nineties R and B. That's yeah. when I heard it last. Um, so anyway, it kind of caught me off guard. I'm like, huh? was she cute? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but and I, you know what? For one split second, I'm like, does she? Did she just call me that, or does she call everybody that? Yeah. And so anyway, go back in this room, and I'm kind of like reeling a little bit from that. I'm like, that was kind of weird. Can't this get is, it out of your head, huh? I'm, I'm like, this is this is a professional environment. You didn't call. I would have called her sugar. Right? She calls me would, baby. Yeah. I've been like, all right, sugar, let's go. <laughs> Come on, let's do this. So anyway. <laughs> We go in this room. Let's have a war of, of <laughs> terms of endearment. Terms. Of endearment. <laughs> um, so I sit, and you know she's going. Over, she, I think she asks a couple questions, does a bunch of stuff. She's mm-hmm. putting on gloves. She's uh, vaselineing up her hands. I don't know why Woo. she did a rectal exam. That was weird, but um, hey, you know, giving blood these days, all kinds of stuff goes down. <laughs> I like the fact that she gave you a rectal exam and put Vaseline on both gloves. <laughs> Holy <laughs> cow! <laughs> both gloves. She did like the whole hand and everything between the One, fingers. Yeah, oh yeah, got that whole thing up there so she could spread them fingers out while she's. Like, <laughs> God bless America. Um, <laughs> so she's checking for polyps. Well, she was check- <laughs> she was checking for something because she had to do she had to check for something like preliminary before I even the gave pricks. blood. Yeah, the yeah. pricks of the finger. Pricks the finger, and I'm telling, I'm like, I, I I've gotten that done a couple of times uh, just to do like um, little, you know, just to get like a drop for to check your whatever cholesterol or whatever they do. I have no idea. Okay, so <laughs> I've had that done a couple of times. It hurts. <laughs> yeah. It hurts. She went too deep. And I get—I don't know if you can't. Did she have this little contraption that she, Just I guess, put they, over top and click yeah, the button and click the button. And I'm like, and, and I like jumped when she did that. <laughs> and she's like, I know. She's like, I'm sorry. I, I usually try to make that so it doesn't hurt or whatever. I'm like, because well, you can, mo- you can move how deep that it goes. Because some people have real thin skin. Some people have real thick skin. So you can move that needle. Aaron had to do it when she was pregnant for, uh, gestational diabetes or whatever so you can move that needle she just got you way deep she got me deep and she did this move beforehand she she had me take she, she oh she took my blood pressure and everything and another this whole thing is such a weird thing i she, she i had i'm like at the edge of this desk and she's like all right put you know put your hand out on on the desk so i can put you know uh-huh. do, the, do your blood pressure so i put my 
put my hand out and she leans over to put the thing and I feel something on my hand and I look down and I, I think I like had just like met her there or something. Yes. <laughs> yes. Tell me, <laughs> tell me that you grabbed your, uh, the, the nurse's boob. I didn't grab it first. That was saying. it in your hand? It wasn't in my hand. You put your hand there out a, and it was laying in the palm of your hand. No. You not, grabbed no. that thing. No, something. Did she go, ooh, thank you. <laughs> no, something <laughs> brushed like my fingers or something. What do you mean and, something? You know exactly what it was. I wasn't sure. And then I looked down and I'm like, oh, I do know what that is. Hold on. <laughs> that stinks. <laughs> and I, 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 I'm like, oh, I didn't know if I should apologize or I'm like, you just oh pretend like it didn't happen. That's, a, that's what I ended up doing. <laughs> but, but I'm like, oh, my God, please. I hope that happens all the time. <laughs> so did she say anything about it? She didn't say anything, but she called me baby uh, 17 more times. But anyway, so she does this move as she's getting ready to take the blood. She does this move. She's uh, pulling all the blood to the end of my finger. Pulling the blood to the end of your I'm finger. I'm like, I think this is going to make it hurt. So it looked like she was – it definitely – she was giving – she was basically – uh, I, I don't know how to say this on a podcast where we try to be as clean as we can, but she was masturbating your finger. <laughs> I, I, was, I didn't even think of it that she way. Beating but... off your finger. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it looked really... like. That's what it looked like. I mean, you're, you know, one of those jobs. No, no. She was just like pulling the, yeah. pulling the blood. The I can see finger. exactly what you're doing right. and everybody <laughs> on YouTube can too. <laughs> <laughs> we get, we get it. Show, show us one more time. Though. The other thing, I'm not showing that again. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think about that as that thing, but that goes right along with everything else that was happening. So anyway, so I, but I, I did when she was doing that, I'm like, OK, this must be to pull the blood. And I could feel the blood rushing to the end of my finger. And I'm like, I think this is going to make it hurt even more. And I think it did. Uh -huh. I really think it did. Yeah. So anyway, she she she, you know, pokes my finger and gets a prick and blood out. And by the way, I don't know how you are with this stuff, but. If they have to take blood, I'm sure you've had to have blood drawn at the doctor or something, right? Mm -hmm. Can you look at it? Can you watch them put it oh, in yeah. and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I can do that. It doesn't bother me. I can't do that. No. I, I think at one time, I think I got okay with it. Yeah. The older I get, I think I'm I'm losing my I'm losing my ability losing to do your that. squirrel, huh? Yeah, I'm losing my squirrel. I'm losing my squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so I'm here with this old squirrel, and and she takes the. She takes my blood. Did you just call this poor lady an old squirrel. I just, I'm. I, you just called me a squirrel. I don't know. You lost your squirrel. It's gone. I lost it. I had a squirrel. It's gone now. Anyway, so she now, yeah, my squirrel. I lost it. She now works at Hawksworth. But <laughs> so anyway, so she gets all the does whatever the testing she has to do. I don't even remember what it was for. Finally, I get out of that room, go back to the chair. This, it's like a. It reminds me of a dentist chair. Okay. So you sit, you sit in the chair, it can recline all the way back, basically, uh, can lift up and down and all that kind of stuff. So then this other girl takes over and, uh, and she seems a little more calm and <laughs> a little more, a little more normal, a little more normal. All right. And, professional uh, maybe is the right word. She's very professional. She's okay. very professional. Um, so anyway, so she did, did she ask for your number to give it to the other lady? She did not. She didn't call <laughs> me baby or babe or honey or sweetie or anything. All right. Um, so anyway, she gets me in this chair and she starts kind of talking and, and, you know, she's, she's pretty matter of fact to the point, but she's also nice and, and being friendly and stuff. And she's like, you know, uh, you feel okay. You all, all that kind of stuff. I'm like, I, I am nervous. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm nervous about this is the first time in a very long time I've done this. I'm yeah. nervous about like passing out or something. I, I talked to the lady on the phone. It sounds like you're taking a lot of blood here. <laughs> and, uh, I talked to the lady. She said, "Do you know that we have to take 192 <laughs> teaspoons of blood? <laughs> That's 7,846 milliliters. Yeah, you know that? Jesus, my lord!" <laughs> so she's nice, but she's like, she's like, yeah, you know, you should be okay. It's a, you know, we'll lay you back all the way or almost all the way or whatever. Just relax. And and so she's like talking me through how to do everything. By the way. I automatically, I am a big time curler and crosser of my legs. Oh, me too. They don't like that. Yeah. You're not allowed to do that. No, so, dentist tells me when they take my blood pressure, don't cross your legs. Cause every time I get in the dentist chair, boom, I'm immediately crossed immediately at the ankles. What I'm doing now is how I sit in my seat all day long while I'm like, yeah. foot, I, if it, I just, not I just bar. randomly brought my feet back the same way. Crossed at the ankles, bent at the underneath. knees, sitting down underneath. 
hundred percent all the time. So I think that's really bad. And I think I have uh, issues in my feet and stuff because of that too. But so she's like, spread your feet apart. Don't, you know, it's going to help with blood flow and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, she gets me hooked up and I don't look. She even, she's nice enough to say, so this is the part. If you don't want to look, look away, make sure. So I look away, but I still know she's doing it. I'm like, oh dear God, please don't. But she was, she was hurt way less than the prick. Way less. Yes. Way less. And she was like, okay. So first thing she's like, let me see your, your veins, you know, hold mm-hmm. out your arms and stuff. She's like, oh, you have good veins. Oh, you That's have good, good veins. You like that, right? Oh, you got good veins. Oh, they, they like that for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm like, yeah, my sister's a nurse. She talks about, she talks about how good my veins are all the time. Cause she's always looking for that kind of stuff. Um, so anyway, so, so she figures out which one she wants to use or whatever. She jabs me with the old blood suction thing. And, um, I'm sure that's the scientific term for yeah, blood suction thing. So anyway, she starts, it starts flowing. I don't, you know, I'm not, I don't feel it or anything. Uh, and I'm like, I'm like, oh man, just please don't get lightheaded. Please don't feel like I'm going to pass out. Cause more and more as I get older, I'm dealing with that stuff. Yep. So anyway, I'm talking to her for a bit. She's, you know, she, oh, and, and, uh, so she gives me one of those, one of those like uh, stress balls. Yeah, Cause they want you to keep doing that with your hand or whatever. Yeah. So she's like every, like, you know, eight to 10 seconds, 10, to 12 seconds, something like that. Give it a squeeze just to make sure we keep, keep it flowing or whatever. Um, so I start actually first, she was like every like five seconds do it. So, and she's like, and we can, you know, go. And you further. were counting too, weren't you? You're were like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, <laughs> three, four, five, squeeze. One Mississippi, two <laughs> Mississippi. Yeah. Um, no, we were like talking as that was going on. So I was, I was actually trying to guess the five seconds first. I don't think so, it would have been a big deal if you did it more or less. I think you'd have been all right. I think I, I don't did, think I, you, I don't think the blood sucker would have exploded or anything crazy would have happened. I did. Okay. I think so. Anyway, we got through the first, you know, few seconds or whatever. She's like, okay, you can go every 10 seconds or whatever. So I start doing that and we're just talking and stuff and it's flowing and everything. And, and it goes faster because she's like it you know sometimes it takes a little while sometimes it's fast it just depends on how it's going so it goes pretty fast so it wasn't too bad uh she got me all what is up. fast oh, how many, how long does it take to get 192 teaspoons it was uh it was it was probably a teaspoon every 6.4 seconds so if you want to do the math on that uh no i I was in the chair for probably 10 minutes. I'd say 10 minutes or so. 10, 10 minutes, maybe. Something like that. It sounds right. The entire time I'm in the chair, I sit in this chair. There's a guy across the, across the little aisle way mm-hmm. in another chair being helped by another lady. From the moment I sat in the chair and was aware there was another person, he didn't stop for a breath. He talked every moment every moment i was in the chair he was talking to the lady about like i don't know shows or games or something that he's into oh my gosh i i'm like i was blown away the more he talked i'm like oh my god i kept becoming more and more aware he had to be a truck driver i don't know what he was he was he was driving people crazy i'll tell you that Mm -hmm. but man he didn't i was like i can't believe this and he was quick too he's talking quick the uh-huh. whole time <laughs> he's not like me <laughs> him and hawing around he is talking so fast and he and i'm i'm like oh this poor lady oh this poor lady poor gal and so she's being real nice about it just oh okay yeah okay yeah and in her mind can't wait until all that blood comes out she's probably she's probably like like squeezing his arm and <laughs> trying she, was be, she was beating off his uh the top of her arm trying to get that stuff out of there <laughs> she's pulling his arm <laughs> <laughs> she, she's she's cutting it off at 186 <laughs> teaspoons no stuff. we're good we're good i i don't need that i don't need i need that last seven teaspoons six <laughs> teaspoons <laughs> so anyway he, he finally he gets done a couple minutes before i do and he goes back goes to this goes to the counter and he's trying to joke around with everybody and he's the life of the party here mm-hmm. and i'm like oh boy all oh, right chris Witt's in the house ah, I like chris is in the house boy so anyway so he gets his you go and you they have like a snack bar 
okay. right? Because they, yeah, they want get you get your sugar little... and stuff yep. back in you. Yep. Hey, boy, is that my favorite part? Yeah. What <laughs> would what they have on the? Okay, you got, keep telling the story. So anyway, that's basically it. So she she gets me covered up. She gets uh, I get this uh, blue like elastic tape around with the with the gauze nice. on. Yep. So I I kind of felt like uh like you know Allen Iverson or I had some kind of yeah. like uh, accessory on my arm like mm-hmm. I was ready to go play. Anyway, I go. She's like, "Well, we got we have snacks and drinks over there." I'm like, "Okay, cool." And, and I'm like, I'm still thinking like I, I feel fine, but I'm like, when I stand up, all the blood that used to be in my body is not there anymore. Yeah, it's not gonna. It's gonna. Whatever blood you do have might rush to your head. I yeah. Know. How How does that work? I don't know. I, I was like, so I, did I, you pass out? I didn't, and I didn't even feel like I was going to. I was. I was wow. very happy about that. So I'm like, all I got to do is get over to the snack bar, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna be okay. I get to the snack bar. They've got a bunch of different snacks up on this counter. She's like, all right, um, you know, pick a snack. And uh, what kind of drink would you like? I said, ah, just give me some water. And she looks at me. She just, like, looks at me for a second, like, what do you, what do you mean water? <laughs> like a bartender. Would. You're supposed to have orange juice or something with a little, yeah. yeah. And she's like, well, you know, I think we, we generally want people to have something like that. Yeah. So she names that they've got, like, three juices. Which we established already. I don't like any of them. Absolutely. And a Sierra Mist. There you are, Sierra Mist. Give me mist, that baby. Sierra Mist, gal. You get that extra sweet, misty Sierra Mist. Mm. Give me those bubbles in my in my throat. Mm-hmm. So I get a Sierra Mist. I get a Grandma's brand, Grandma's pack of Ooh, little, little chocolate, chocolate chip, chip cookies. cookies. Mm, yeah. We talked about those as being one of the top chocolate chip cookies you can get. Yes. And so I, I sat at this table. And uh, the guy was the, the guy that was in that chair that wouldn't shut up. Be quiet. He was at the other table. He actually wasn't speaking every second, but he did. So the the lady who was in charge of the snack counter didn't seem like she was seem like she was ready to go. This yeah. was the end of the day. And uh, but so she, I got my snack and everything. Gave me the Sierra Mist. I sit down. So she's like just about ready to go. Yeah, like hang out for a certain amount of time before they let you go. They say like 10, 15 minutes, mm-hmm. sit around and, and just hang out, make sure you're good. So I'm like, okay, I'm doing that. I'm just eating. And she pulls out a book. She's reading, she starts reading a book. <sighs> please talk to some, please, please, please tell me that guy talked to her when she had a book in front of her face. What are you reading? Oh my God, it's on the cover. Don't, I'm, re- I'm reading. Oh, look, I talk to a lot of people about a lot of stuff. That, why would you do that? Wait for this. What kind of book is it? Uh, it's a murder, you know, murder Whatever, mystery yeah. or something like that. Um, how do you get murdered? <laughs> <laughs> this dude is such a tool bag. The oh first, my God. the first question she was annoyed with. That was his third question. What did she say? And she's she just like pauses for a second and she's like. <laughs> <laughs> how'd they get murdered knife <laughs> that, just the word knife just the if word that's knife. not a clue stop talking to me right now i don't know what clue you could possibly have given besides the tell to shut up long pause look up straight face knife <laughs> <laughs> oh that's so good so anyway i feel like god this guy's driving people crazy so I finished. Now, when I sat down in the chair, the professional girl is going through the whole spiel. She, you know, she says the same thing over and over all day long, t- talking about what's going on, what she's doing, how we're doing it. One of the things was they have this little stand with sizes in little cubby holes. Mm-hmm. You get a I gave blood today shirt. Oh, nice. That's part of the deal. Yeah. If we have your size in stock, feel free on your way out to grab a shirt. I'm looking over there. Yeah, give me a medium. Come on, give me a medium. Free shirt. I'm a big free shirt. Guy. Oh, absolutely. I got a million shirts, million t-shirts. Here's another one. I end up so that's at the like the front where you first come in. Okay. This snack bar is right next to the back door. Oh, okay. I'm I'm good now. Finished my cookies. I'm up. I'm like, okay, I guess I'm good. I'm gonna head out. I want to head out. Th- back through the way I came and give me a shirt. Give me a shirt. Nope. Oh, go out this exit here. What? Mm. 
Yeah. You didn't get your shirt? Didn't get my shirt. Did you say, oh, but they said I got your free shirt? <laughs> I should have said, oh, but. Oh, I but. did. I did. <laughs> Oh, baby. You're supposed to get a shirt. But baby said, I can't get a shirt. <laughs> baby told me I get a shirt. <laughs> so anyway. Do you know who I am? I thought about walking around the building, going back in the front door and saying, I didn't get my shirt. Yeah. Angry lady said, I got to go out that door. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because baby said I could get a shirt. Because Ding Dong wouldn't stop talking to her. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, that was basically it. I, I left. I'm going to find. I don't, I guess I get an email or something. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe they just take it and give it to somebody else. And they're like, eh. now nah, you'll figure it all out. I don't mean, I don't think you're going to get the blood back. They're probably going to give the blood to somebody else. But the point was to figure out which blood type was right. I'm just going to go in there. Yeah. I'm just going to go in there and tell them I need a transfusion right now. I bet they could probably find your blood and just give it back to you. I would like to get what it. What did you, did you work out or anything afterwards? I'll drink it or whatever. However, I got to get it back. Whatever you got to do to get it in. Uh, no, that, so they say you're not supposed to strenuously exercise yeah. for 24 hours. All right, so I in, in my senior year in high school, I went, gave blood. I've never told you this. Do you have gym right after? No, I gave blood and uh, no problem. Watch them stick it in there. You know, I'm just talking, just doodly do, got my little thing going. Ran 10 miles cross country, that and day. they go to like at the end. You know, they take the big pouch of blood off and cap it off, and then they take these little vials. Did they do that for you? They have, like, a bunch of vials that they filled up right at the end. Maybe. You didn't watch any of it. So when they took that off and capped it off, all of a sudden, I start getting dizzy. Mm. And I looked at the lady, and she pops the first one. She had three of these little vials to fill up. She pops the first one in, and I said, oh, I don't feel so good. And she says, uh-oh. And she looks over and yells, get the red bucket brought that red bucket sat it on my lap and i hurled like a son of a gun oh no and i almost passed out too uh so they get their stuff done right they get their three little things i got two lunches i got the rest of my regular lunch and i got to stay for the other lunch they gave me all kinds of cookies and orange juice uh but then so i got two lunches that was awesome <laughs> and then they they told tell you not to work out or anything so i go to a buddy we go to tom domino's house okay. to play football and we're playing football in the, I don't know, like the like three people's front yards or something. I don't know how it worked. We're playing football. And I remember running to go, running to go catch a pass. And I could not breathe. I couldn't catch my breath. I was like, whoa, my God, I'm about to die. What is, I cannot do anything. And dude, buddy looks at me and he's like, what is wrong with you? Did you get blood today? And I was like, yeah. He goes, they tell you not to work out or do anything. I said, I'm not working out. He's like. You can't do anything like you don't have any blood in like, I don't know. I'm not a chemist. I mean, these guys are, you know, I had hung out with some smart kids back in the day. They're like, dude, you have no blood in your body. <laughs> you have no oxygen going throughout your body because there's no blood. I was like, oh, all right. Well, I guess I'm done here. I could I could hardly breathe. Wow. Yeah. But I passed out. I almost passed out. Oh. Did puke. And I might have passed out. I don't think I passed out. That but was I definitely puked. Hundred percent. Yeah, definitely. Funny. Totally. That when you started that story, I thought you were gonna, you were going to look at me and say like I did, but I, yeah, totally did. It was pretty uneventful, actually. I made that a very long story for no reason. But um, I, I my my plan was when I got home was to cut the grass. Well, that too, was too strenuous. That was my ticket. I was like, I get to sit on the couch. That's exactly right. Sat on the couch a little bit. Went to dinner. Had a nice meal. Went yeah. home. Sat back on the couch. When you were on your way back home. Did you listen to talk radio or music on the way home? Uh, probably a podcast. Probably a podcast. So this podcast does a uh, segment called the Mount Rushmore. That's right. It does. Our Mount Rushmore this week was the Mount Rushmore of songs. Mount Rushmore of songs, which was which is almost as bad as the Mount Rushmore of uh, it, was the one I did. I don't know. It, it doesn't get much more difficult than this. Um, so, wait, just I just want to rem try to remember. Mount Rushmore has is it forty eight presidents? Yeah, exactly. Adam is making us pick four songs as our favorite songs. Which, in case anyone is wondering, I, we, we both said last week, oh, man, we're really going to have to sit down and think about this. Both of us sat down today right before the podcast and went, ooh, I got to do my, my Mount Rushmore because I didn't do anything. Now, I have one song that is automatic for me 
Um, and I'm gonna. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna try to pull these up and I'm gonna try to play them at the same time. And we may get some kind of pop copyright infringement. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We'll find out. Find out. Um, but to start here, number one for me by far. Only two things are uh, is about. not Liberty Mutual. <laughs> so <laughs> and- is is ludicrous we all know ludicrous is one of my favorite all-time people i love ludicrous so i had to go with my favorite ludicrous song which you probably wouldn't expect but it is blueberry yum yum yeah ah, you feel that Damn. ludicrous seems like a guy that would that would try to uh, never did before, sue us <laughs> i mean we're not doing anything we're just talking about we're, we're kind of critiquing the song and you're allowed to do that right oh okay then in that case and we're talking about how phenomenal this song is let's get got that blue bear so anyway that is my uh that's gonna be my number one song wow uh do you want to go with your number one song what's your number one song oh boy um i'm gonna go with summertime by will smith oh popular man. guy right now Without a doubt, Will Smith "Summertime." That is a that's a phenomenal song. I should say uh, "Fresh Prince." That was done by DJ Jazzy Jeff and Fresh Prince. That's right. Please. Oh God! When you hear that drums, please. Mm, both of us starting off with some mellow, mellow tunes to start. This song is amazing. The music video is great too. Yeah. That's All right, so song. so we're gonna start off with those two. So I'm going to go with my number two song, which once again, if you know me at all from being a kid, this was, I went through a phase in my life where I wore my clothes totally backwards for a while in order to be crisscross. That's what I wanted to do. So I've not known a bigger crisscross fan in my life. than you, uh, TJ Lacita. Me and TJ Lucido were crisscross. We would like on, that's what we did on, on uh, recess was like, I'd be one guy, he'd be the other. We just, you'd do be the Chris song, and, and he'd be Chris. Be, I'd be Chris Kelly, he'd be Chris Smith, and we just go at it. How high, real high, because I'm dressed so fly. All right, so that's my number two. Adam, what's your number two on the Mount Rushmore? I'm going with Always by Atlantic Star. Ooh, okay. So, I am not a thousand percent sure. This is a 1987 song. I'm getting slower and slower here, buddy. Yeah, you are. Slower and slower. Um, I've always said that if I get married, this would be my wedding song. You know, you dance to a song for your first dance or whatever the heck. I mean, if I if I get a choice, I he's picked no song. I don't want to dance in front of everyone. Sure. Uh, If I have to do that. Um, I will wear a mask so nobody sees my real face and dance to the song. I've never heard this, but I got to tell you so far, I'm, I'm digging it. And this is definitely a wedding song. Such a beautiful song. Yes. Yeah. I bet a lot of 1987, 1988 guys and gals had this as their wedding song. Oh yeah. Without a doubt. All right. So that's going to pull me to number three. And once again, man, like I love so many there's so many great songs. I mean, you've got, you were talking about sublime earlier. you you know, you've got a ton of, you know, rock guys, you got hip hop, well, big hip hop guy. Um, so many great ones. I have chosen a couple off the wall, right? Like blueberry yum, yum, definitely not thought of as, uh, as ludicrous is one of Ludacris's top 10 or anything. Right. But it's my number one. Now, for all of you people out there who have never heard of the group Hepcat, have you ever heard of Hepcat? I've heard of Hepcat. I don't remember anything about them. Without a doubt, Hepcat Right on Time. The, the, the album is called Right on Time. By far, top. I think I had it in my Mount Rushmore of albums. Oh. Didn't we do that? Mount Rushmore of albums or no? Maybe. Dun, 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 dun. And you already miss holding hands, strolling down the shore. Look at 
I love you once more. So I love Hepcat. I think that's an amazing song. I dig that. That's nice. Yeah, I love that whole that whole album is like that. Dude, I sit by the pool with that going. Mm, just <laughs> chilling away. All right, Adam, what is your number three? Ooh, it's getting harder. I'm going Reasons by Earth, Wind, and Fire. Wow. you uh, We, we got to remember where Adam, I totally forgot about the fact that Adam is a huge, huge old school R&B kind of a, kind of a deal, right? Yeah, absolutely. Old, oh, I love it. Yeah. Everybody loves a little good, a little bit of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Once again, phenomenal. Just all, we've, we've been pretty laid back outside of Jump. Sink, baby. <laughs> outside of Jump, so far, we have been pretty uh we've we've been pretty mellow pretty is that telling who we are in our lives right now yeah i would say so you think so mm -hmm. we're 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 past that uh grungy hip-hoppy go crazy we're, we're more just let's chill and hang out absolutely adam i don't have a fourth song yet because i can't think of a song that i love more than another to put on outside of these songs man we could do a top 100 and have enough. Oh, and I would go, yeah, I would easily be able to do that. All right. So um, let's think. Number four. So, so many good songs. I'm so bad with songs anyway. You know, I, I mean, I love Eminem. There's so many great Eminem songs you could go with. Uh, you could probably think of six more ludicrous songs that you could oh, 100%. Possibly in, in a heartbeat, I could do that. Yeah. Um, you know, the, I, I went through a little span where I like, like uh, Candy Shop by 50 Cent was a real was one of my favorite songs for a long time. It was always a good song when I tried to when I tried to memorize it. I print the lyrics out as a kid, you know, and you like play it and 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 try to read the words with them. And it's impossible, but you keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And then you end up singing Vanilla Ice, Ice, Ice Baby at everybody's wedding yeah. for the rest of your life <laughs> while people do while people do did that to yourself, man. I did. I totally did that. But I mean, it was a one-time thing is all it was supposed to be. And yeah, hopefully, I think that's it. Outside of you and Emily, I think everyone's married now, right? In our family, yeah. Everyone's married. I mean, except for the California people who've never seen me do it and could care less about it. I think I've done it at almost everyone's. I didn't do it at Tony's. I didn't do it at Mike's. You didn't? I would no. have guessed you would have done it at both of theirs. No, especially I, it, Tony's. it wasn't a thing at that point in time. That was early on. Those guys have been married for a long time. They have been married for yeah. a long time. I, I I don't know when it started. It might have started at my wedding. Man, I feel like you've just always done it. I don't know that I did it at Joey's wedding. Really? Maybe I did. You had to have. It was weird. It started with friends. Like one day I was at this my buddy Josh Baird's wedding, mm -hmm. and I'm at the wedding, hanging out in the back. Nobody said anything. I didn't even know he knew I. Well, yeah, because we used to do it at the, I used to do it at the bar all the time, but. All of a sudden, out of the blue, they call me up. Hey, Chris to the DJ stand. And I was like, what, what is going on? And next thing I know, they play it. And they're like, come on, man. Like at this real nice wedding at Longworth Hall. You ever been to a wedding at Longworth Hall? So. Dude, it's real. They redid this whole upper floor. Totally. Like, here's how it is. This is how nice the wedding was. No draft beer. <laughs> oh. All bottle beer, open bar. Wow. So I got these fancy people over here looking at me. Same thing happened to my buddy. My buddy. Uh, Jeff's wedding, his wife's got all the money. His wife's family has, you know, there are East Siders. His her brother played for the Patriots. They got plenty of money over there. They had everything was at mansions and crazy places. Wow. And they do it again to me there. Like I, it's I don't understand. Did he win championships with the Patriots? He I don't know if he won. He played for him for like four or five years. I want to say, but I don't know if he won one. Hmm. Anyway, that's besides the point. I will tell you this. There's no way that it's definitely the song I know the best, but there's no way I would put Ice Ice Baby on my Mount Rushmore. Yeah. Oh, there are a lot of songs that maybe I maybe really, 20 years ago, but yeah. not now. Yeah. Well, I, I even mentioned to you before we started here uh, a, a song that I know all of the words to that I don't want to put on my thing. That's right. I don't want to say yeah. it. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so you got you know I'm I'm having a hard time with my fourth too. I wrote down uh, what are your what are all the songs that you wrote down? Ones that I haven't mentioned yet. Um, so I, I think if I have to choose a favorite boys to men song, which by the way, we've been huge oh boys to men. God. Fans. I didn't even think see, boys to men didn't even come through. Could, could oh, be man. your favorite boys to men song, could be your fourth. Yeah. I, there are so many, I, there are too many good boys to men songs, but I think if I have to pick my favorite, 
You might be surprised. Uh, ah, that's the title. Really? Yeah. I mean, I've always loved Motown Philly, but uh, ah, is that what you're going to pick? No, no, but that was one I put on there. And I don't know. I could, I could pick. Um, You also have come and talk to me by Joe to see it was a good day by ice cube. That's one of the, that's one of the classics. Yep. Um, Another, I mean, Earth, Wind, and Fire is like the ludicrous thing for me. It, it's you could I could pick ten Earth, Wind, and Fire songs that I could put on here too. Yeah, yeah. Um, Can we talk by Tevin Campbell? One I almost sang for Andre when he was on. <laughs> um, all those songs, man. I just those were the ones I I jotted down as ones that I know are are my all time favorites. But I mean, the list goes on and on. I think between those, I think I'm gonna go. You know what? Just because Boys to Men has had such a big impact on me and my music taste over the years, that was, you know, one of the one of the first groups that I really fell in love with and still love them to this day. I think I'm going to go with that. Uh, ah, it's it's how do you even spell it? I think they spell it like U H H H A H H H or something like that. Um, it's on Cooley High Harmony right, with Motown Philly right. and all the rest of them, uh, little things and all that. I, I'm going. That's another, another. So if you if you're bringing it up, now there's that there are a couple. A... <laughs> there are a couple versions, right? There's like an extended ver, the one from the extended version or something. Eight, yeah, seven, this is. Six, I think this is five, good. Four, three, they two, all have their shirts off in a closet. One. Injection, fellas. Injection, <laughs> fellas. Oh, and this is the this is the version that I like yeah. the most. Yeah, it's because the music video has got a bunch of good looking ladies. I don't even remember the music yeah, video. One of them was in a shower. I'll watch it. I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> Boys the Men by far. Mike. Unbelievable. Love I right next to me. All right. You're oh. going to go with that over all the others, huh? I think I'm going with that. Even, especially Man. since I just heard the first yeah. part. I get so pumped when that comes on. All right. Uh, I think I found that I went through a phase here where this song was one of my favorite songs and I'm going to stick with it. it. It opened us up on the podcast a couple of times. It may have got us kicked off of YouTube once or twice, but screw it. We can do it <laughs> like this week. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We know about that. Yeah. We know about that. Oh man. It reminds me of when, early episodes. When Cardi B came out with Bodak Yellow, this song was insane. Ooh. Sorry, I we probably shouldn't play too much of it because this will get kicked off. So <laughs> I'm telling you right now, that song, when that beat starts, dun, dun, oh, my God, it does one. remind you a little bit of the old times, doesn't it? Because yeah. we did use it. I used it a few times because I was in charge of the music. Love it. Lo- total. Oh, my God. My favorite thing about that song, the uh, the uh, grammar. Oh, these. Yeah. These is red bottoms. These is bloody shoes. That's right. <laughs> These is red bottoms. These is bloody shoes. Oh, God, I love the use of is or the omission of is when you need it and all that kind of stuff. It's wonderful. (laughs) It's so wonderful trying to go. I be in and out them banks so much. I know they tired of me. I honestly don't give up about who ain't fond of me. Oh, drop two mixtapes in six months. What is working hard in me? Love it. I don't bother with these hoes. Oh, man. Love me some Cardi B. She doesn't sound anything like me, by the way. That's it. She's not. She's, she'll never be that good. So that's four and four. That's four and four. We got our Mount Rushmore. I don't know that that's really my Mount Rushmore songs, but I love all four of those songs, so I'm totally good with it. We can we can finish this podcast, start another one immediately. I'll have four different songs. 100% correct. <laughs> there's, there's no doubt about that. All right. Well, that was good. I enjoyed that. Which means we get to come up to our last part of the entertainment segment of the show, which is uh, Mr. Ronnie Chang. I got to write my I, I, I missed like the last eight, eight minutes of this. OK, so I watched all but eight minutes. I think I got enough. Yeah. Um, Ronnie Chang. Sorry. All right. So I got second. my I have mine written down. Oh, that's good. The, the, the second special of ronnie's that we have watched Mm -hmm. first one was terrific um this one's called speakeasy it's on netflix um and it was uh, you can go first would you know i went first with the mount rushmore i did the music you go first okay so (laughs) 
I was, yeah, I, was I made you do two. I was thinking, did I really? Oh yeah, I made you do two in a row. Okay, go. <laughs> I was, um, I was really expecting really, really, really good because a couple of years ago was when we watched that special and he, he was fantastic. So I'm like, well, he's going to get better. And he, I'm sure he has. Um, I will say that I feel like there's a lot of the same subject matter in this one than the last one. He yeah. talks a lot about. There's a race, ton of COVID to start races, and then yeah. it jumped into COVID or then it jumped into race. Yeah. Jumped into COVID and then went back to COVID for a little bit. And then he talked about COVID for another five minutes. Um, that, <clears throat> go ahead. <laughs> Were the jokes a little slow? Did it take him for a, did he, did you feel like he repeated himself a hundred times before he would tell the punchline? Was that part of his spiel? Uh, maybe he was, maybe he was stretching the, uh, the premises. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, but he did talk about a lot of the same stuff in, in, you know, America versus other countries and stuff like that. He talked a lot about the United Kingdom, but he had a whole bit about how he hates the UK and yeah. the reason he performed there a couple of times and they weren't, they didn't treat him real well and that kind of thing. Um, and some of that was, some of that was pretty good. Uh, what I thought the funniest part about the whole thing was his Mr. Bean impression. Oh, yes. <laughs> he does a really good Mr. Bean. and he's, He makes some jokes about the guy. And, um, <laughs> how Mr. Bean is like the, the biggest, like the most world-class uh, comedian in the United Kingdom for some reason. How terrible is that? <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, he did. He did a lot of stuff that, you know, same sort of subject matter that he's done before. But, you know, they're different jokes. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. It, it was uh, to be honest, it wasn't quite as good. I didn't think as his first one, I, as I remember his first one. being. I, I totally think. agree with that. I still think it was pretty good. Um, and I would I would definitely see him live, especially if he's got if I know he's he, he just did this special. If he's doing another, he's working on new jokes and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so I, I went ahead with a 3.8. Whoa, 3.8. I feel like I was in the fours the first time with him. Maybe a four. I feel like I was probably in the fours too. Cause I, th- I feel like I loved his first special. Yeah. So, uh, I'll just be straight. I gave it a 3.2. Okay. I was not, I was not excited about it. Uh, it, it was a whole lot of, I felt like I was waiting for a lot of stuff. Like he kept talking. Like, I can't even like, like when he was talking about dumb people on Facebook. Yeah. He said stupid people on Facebook six times before he finally told the joke. Like, I get it. I know. Come on, get to the joke. Come on. This is, I'm not getting where, where's like, he wanted that to be funnier just by saying that than it really was. So that struggle, I struggled, especially in the beginning, it got much better in the middle and the end much better the beginning with the covid stuff was they were i feel like that he had potential at some really good jokes with those mm-hmm. but they just lingered and then it the the punchline didn't hit as hard as i thought it would when he did it i mean it was they were funny they could have been funny in three minutes instead of 12 minutes yeah and that maybe that's maybe that's just because Part of me is as I watched it after we lost the baseball game today, so I was a little down in the dumps. But you know, it is what it is, right? So, uh, yeah, three point two. I, I, I mean, it wasn't bad. I, I mean, it was good. I, yeah, I'd say watch it. It wasn't like a under a three or under a two and a half. Which am I average two and a half, or do I start at zero? Three. Yeah, you start at one. I start at one. So yeah. three is middle. So it's better than average. Yeah, yeah. Same for me for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, okay, well, I mean, good for Ronnie Chang, uh, and so I've got to pick a new special for next week. You've got a, <clears throat> you've got a Mount Rushmore for next week. I'm going to go with Mount Rushmore. That is exactly what I have, and I am prepared. Oh, nice! That's, nice that's a nice total work. lie. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'll I'll start with the uh, with the comedy special for next week, and I'm deciding between two. Um, these might be two. V- opposite very opposite uh genres of comedy i love it all right let's do it we're talking between jeff foxworthy yeah. the, good, the good old days the good old days which you hate the title of heaven forbid somebody enjoys enjoys what what life was like when they were kids and mike epps indiana mike oh, so man 
last Mike Epps one was a disappointment for me. I know, me too, me too. But the preview, you know, when you're scrolling through Netflix, mm-hmm, yeah, the and it just pops up. up yeah, I was like, this kind of feels like a new, different Mike Epps a little bit. Yeah, maybe. could be. Um, I think for that reason, let's try Indiana Mike. Indiana Mike. So famously, t- go ahead. oh, please. I, then we're gonna talk about Michael Jackson, right? Oh, that's another Indiana Mike. That's where I thought that was going. What, what were you saying? Who was famous? He's, he's from Indiana? He's famously from Indianapolis, yeah. Indiana Mike sounds like we're about to talk about Mike Jackson. I've seen him at like 10 Pacers games. Oh, really? Yeah, he goes to a lot of Pacers games a lot. Oh, that's cool. So he still lives in Indiana. I don't know if he does or he goes back a lot, but yeah, he might. He's he might probably got a place there. there. Actually, you know what? One of the jokes in the preview says, I go back to Indianapolis. I love Indianapolis. I go back and they're like, no, oh, this – so and so still doing these corny jokes, huh? Like, like he's visiting, maybe coming back. So I imagine he probably lives in LA or New York or something like that. But I feel like he goes back a yeah. lot. Good for Mike Epps. Close by. He's close by. Anyway. Very close by. Oh, Michael Epps, Indiana Mike. All right, Indiana Mike, which leaves me to um, my Mount Rushmore. You know what I'm going to do, Adam? In, in honor of your. Uh, handyman-ness over the past few months helping your dad get his house together to sell it. That's very generous to say handyman. And handyman-ness. Handy, handyman-ness. There's nothing handy or manly about me, but uh, sure. Your handyman-ness. 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 Handyman-ness <laughs> has been a huge help for your father. And uh, in in that regard, I am going to do the Mount Rushmore of tools. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> I like this one. I like this one. I have my. I certainly have my least favorite tools. <laughs> we can do the <laughs> Bizarro World Mount Rushmore of tools. <laughs> All right, let, no, let's do Mount Rushmore of tools. That's that's good. All right, Mount good. Rushmore of tools. Excellent. Okay, there you go. <laughs> It's getting like harder it. and harder every time we do this. I told you. It's so next week, I'm, harder and harder. Next week, I'm back up. I said this last week or a couple of weeks ago or something. I was going to come up with a list, so I'm prepared for a while. Yeah. So far, How I've have got you zero. done? So, have you done with that? So far, I've got zero. Yeah. It ain't but easy. I, I wouldn't have come up with tools. That's a good one. I think. And I'm not talking when I say tool. I ain't talking about like the stuff that's on a on a uh, a ballerina's dress skirt. I'm not talking about that kind of tool. Is there like tool called- like that? See that pink stuff over there? My wife's little stuff right there. Is that called a tool? Yeah, that's tooling. Tool. That's tool. Oh, I think it's spelled like T E W L or something though. Oh, tool. Oh, like a tool, like a towel. It's like tool. <laughs> okay. Tool. I feel like if you went on your phone and said, "What is that?" Your phone would go tool. <laughs> yeah, tool. You hit the little audio button next to the thing. Tool. On the, on tool. The down tool. The- Tool. Dictionary thing. Tool. Tool. I feel like that's pretty consistent. I feel like that's I could, pretty good. I feel like I could be the phone person. You should be tool. the tool. You should be the, the audio guy. How do you, uh, people that aren't watching this, I'm actually hitting my phone. Am I, am I hitting my phone and saying tool? Oh, that was definitely, <laughs> that was not it. I missed it on that one. All right. On that note, I'm done with all that. All right. So we got uh, Mike Epps, Indiana Mike. We've got the Mount Rushmore tool. Tool. <laughs> We have uh, – what else do we have? We have um, – we got NBA playoffs. The NBA playoffs, the second round should – the first round takes two weeks, doesn't it? Second round may be kicking off. Nah, I don't think it will be. Philly will be – Philly will be waiting. Philly will be month. waiting, yeah. There will be some teams waiting. We'll be able we, – we may have a little bit of the playoff picture ready to go. I'm sure there will be plenty of stuff that happens between now and then, too, besides that. We'll have a we'll have another excellent episode, or if you hate this podcast, another terrible episode. I, I hope you hate this podcast and you still listen. That would be so awesome. That's I wish great. somebody would come up to me and go, dude, I listen to your podcast every week. It sucks. I'd be like, oh, thank you. Listen, appreciate that. If that's the case, tell all your friends how bad it is. Thanks for listening. That is so yeah. awesome. Uh, there you go. All right. So, yeah, that's what we got for next week. Until then, don't forget to turn your headlights on. Oh, which way is he going to go? He got hooked by the hook button. Bang.